evening, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Wonderful. Nice to see you all. Welcome along to Skyways Hotel, Airport West, Western Bulldogs Night. This should be a cracker. They're very, they're very polite, these two, so go very nice and easy on them. Everything they say is yes, please, thank you very much. So they're very courteous. I love that about them. Let's get on with the show so you can meet them as well. Um, what we'd like to do is tell you this is the only live and interactive football panel show going around in Australia. Kind of is, because this is where the plans, fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. So let's get on with it. Our first panellist, he was born on the 8th of November 1992. He's played a total of 122 games and kicked a total of 40 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2012. When he plays for the Western Bulldogs, he wears the number 39 on his back. Please welcome to the stage, Jason Johannesson. Yeah, I know. Isn't it lovely? Thank you very much, all of you, for uh, welcoming Jason to the uh, to the Skyways Hotel tonight for Western Bulldogs tonight. How does he look? Yeah. You're too kind, too kind, yeah, too kind. Yeah, I don't want to embarrass him, but he looks fantastic, I reckon. And you know the reason why, because he's about to become a dad. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fantastic. We were just having a little bit of a chat out the back. Uh, November the 5th. Yeah, We're November, about? November the sixth is November a, the sixth. A due date, so. Wow! Um, oh, wow! Someone's very happy. Your birthday. Oh, oh wow! Well, there you go. Congratulations to both of you. Um, and and did you know Jason knows the sex? So he's prepared to tell you. Yeah. So um, it's going to be a baby girl. So. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh. So excited! So yeah. excited! Well done. I think that's wonderful. Congratulations for that, and I hope that everything goes well. Let's get our second panellist out here, because he might think he might be uh, getting ready to go home. So we'll get him out here. Our second panellist, he was born on the 9th of January 1997. He's played a total of 62 game, uh, games, and he's kicked 33 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2016. When he plays for the Western Bulldogs, he wears the number five on his back. Please welcome to the stage, Josh Dunkley. Good to see you, mate. Have a look. Aren't they handsome boys, ladies? Yeah, yeah. Even some of the guys are going, yeah, they are, Damo. Yeah. Uh, nice to have you. Josh, your first time on the show. Welcome. We hope you have a good time tonight. All these people are going to make you feel nice and comfortable, so you will, won't you? Yeah, I will. JJ spoke really highly of it, so I'm looking <laughs> good. forward to the experience. Oh, good. good. I'll fix you up for that later. <laughs> well done. Um, so what I'm going to do, mate, in order to get these people just a little bit more comfortable and you can start to feel comfortable with them, we're going to do it in our first segment. It's called What About Me? <laughs> Very good, I like that. Yeah, a little bit of singing going. Uh, uh, not a bad one. Uh, not the Shannon Noel one. We're talking about moving pictures going a little bit further back. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah. I'm with fans over already. Um, so what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm actually going to go through a series of questions. I'll ask the question, then both of you can answer, well, you know, uh, yep. one after the other. Um, where did you grow up, Josh? I grew up in Gippsland. Okay. Oh, actually, I was born in Sydney, New yep. South Wales, and then yep. moved back when I was about six years old to Gippsland. Uh, whereabouts on, in Gippsland? Yarram. Does anyone Yarram. know where Yarram is? Yeah. 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 That's good. That's impressive. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. not bad. Uh, what's the population down there? I think there's like 2,000 people in Yarram, okay. so yeah, not right. many at all. Yeah. yeah, good. Okay. And JJ? Yeah, so... Oh, whoops. All right. Um, I was born in South Africa, yeah. in Johannesburg, and um, my parents decided to migrate over to Australia and moved to Perth when I was about seven years old. Yeah, right. There you go. Nice. Um, who did you who did you barrack for when you were growing up? Sydney supporter. Sydney, yeah. Because yeah. of Dad? Yeah, I understand. Not anymore, though. No, that's all right. Yeah, go easy on him. It was only, only happened once. Uh, JJ, what about you? Yeah, so growing up in Perth, um, my dad, you know, loved an underdog. So yeah. um, the Frio Dockers were a new team in the competition yeah. and they weren't going so well. So we decided right. to support them and I followed his footsteps and decided to go for the Frio uh, Football Club. But obviously now that I'm here, um, Bulldogs through and through. Bulldogs through and through. <laughs> Can I ask you, did they ever have a uh, wear your jumper to school day? Yeah, whilst yeah. you're at school? Yeah, in Perth, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Footy yeah. colours. Footy colours. Yeah, 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 like yeah. you. Purple look good on me. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> what I was going to say. That's where I was going with this. Still yeah, yeah. <laughs> you saved me actually asking the question. You got there for me. Um, who was your favourite footballer when you were growing up? 
I had a few. Um, Matthew Pavlich was a, a superstar, and um, I also enjoyed watching Peter Bell um, yeah. growing up. Yeah, cool. Josh? I was a Scotty Penabry fan when oh, I was growing yeah. up, so cool to play against him these days. But yeah. being a Gippslander myself, yeah. um, looked yeah. up to Scott quite highly and yeah, right. catch up with him every now and then now, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, good. Excellent. Um, what is uh, your frame of mind before a game of footy? Are you relaxed? Are you nervous? Are you calm? Are you anxious? Which, which one would describe you? I'm pretty relaxed. I like to prepare really well throughout the weeks and then when it comes to game day, you're not too stressed and worrying about doing too many certain things. I used to be very particular about what I did, but I've learned over the last couple of years, especially in the AFL system, that you've got to relax the mind and interstate trips and things like that. You can't can't control anything. Don't become too methodical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. JJ? Yeah, I'll be similar. I have a pretty chilled sort of personality, but, um, you know, when it gets close to the bounce, yeah, sort of try and get, get a pump up and yeah. um, get, get ready to go. Okay. Whack the headphones on? Uh, not the headphones anymore because no. we're not allowed phones in the change yeah. rooms. So. Oh, yeah, really? Um, but Walking we do have music. We do yeah, have yeah. A, a sound system in the change room, so yeah. um, our property steward um, controls the playlist. Okay, right. Do you have much control over that? Uh, at all? Zero. No, all right. Okay. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah. You'd, be yeah. to, you'd be able to tell. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can shop. imagine, mate. Uh, what were you doing? Uh, what w- were you doing before fo- footy came along for both of you? What were you actually doing before you got the opportunity to play AFL? Yeah, well, um, obviously we probably both got drafted out of high school. But um, once I was, my plan was once finishing high school, I was going to work with my dad who um, fixes elevators and lifts. So oh, yeah. straight out of high school, I was going to go work with him um, yeah. if I didn't get drafted. Wow. Okay. I was going to go to uni, so study a business management degree, and I'm actually still doing that now. So just okay. part time, but. Um, yeah, that was something that I was looking at doing. What sort of chosen profession would you have wanted to go into in that field? Was there I love that... cooking. So it's oh, a bit yeah. of a weird one for a... Right. He's an absolute gun cook. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He wow. um, gets in the kitchen at the club sometimes on yeah. a Tuesday and, um, you know, he, he's, he's, he could go on MasterChef and win wow. it. Wow. No, nah, I don't know if I could win it. <laughs> <laughs> bit yeah, of so that was, that's something that I like wow. doing and always... Was, I think I was about 13 years old when my grandmother actually bought me a frying pan for my birthday and... Wow. Since then, it just took off. So I started That's to cook great. dinners for the family and yeah. now I'm cooking for the boys at the club. Fantastic. <laughs> um, what's one of your trademark dishes? What are you specialising in? Will Minson taught me a really good fish curry. Oh, yeah. So that's probably one of my favourites. Yeah. I've probably cooked it a little bit too much for everyone that, <laughs> I, that I know. So I've got to find something else. Yeah, right. Oh, that's cool. Um, excellent. Uh, do you have a pet? Yes, got a pet. A dog, a cavoodle named Archie. Cool. Puppy dunks too. Yeah, right. Excellent. Yeah, well, I actually have a cavoodle <laughs> as well, and yeah. um, his his name is Raph, so um, he's about a year and a half, and yeah, all he does is sleep, so it's perfect. <laughs> yours, <laughs> is yours a toy? Yeah, toy cavoodle. Yeah. So it's tiny. Yeah. He's a tiny. Baby little one. Tiny. Uh, cool. Oh. Yeah, isn't it? There <laughs> you go. Um, what's your star sign? Sorry. What's your star sign? Star sign, Capricorn. Capricorn. Scorpio. Scorpio. We do that. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere everyone likes that. Um, is there a nickname that you have that we may not be aware of? Oh, maybe Kendall. <laughs> Kendall. Oh. Yeah, Would you like to explain that for us? No, he looks like a Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's, Have a look. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty, it's <laughs> <laughs> there it is there. Yeah, I like it there. Um, Barbie and Ken. Um so, Kendall, what would you, is there one that you may have, JJ, that we may not be yeah. aware of? Yeah, but mine's very, very hard to explain. Um, okay. Shane Biggs was um, one of the orchestrators of it. Um, he called me Peace Baby. Um, Pe- and yeah, it's, it's... Peaceful. Yeah, Peaceful. Uh, peaceful baby. I don't even know okay. how to explain it. All right. When okay. you get one, you get ten. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it happens like that. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Um, when you have got just some you time, what, do you, what are you actually doing? Just you time. Do you find... Uh, I'm probably looking at Netflix a lot in, okay. my, in my time, yep. just trying to relax. Something that I learned as well coming through the system, you've got to be able to wind down. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you'll drive yourself crazy. For sure. Always been, you know. Up, up. and about. Mm. What are you watching on Netflix? Anything? Suits at the moment. Okay. Have you seen Suits? Yeah, right. Suits and um, I was a big fan of Animal Kingdom, so I'm oh. weekly up to date on that one at the moment. Perfect. Okay, cool. What about you, JJ? Yeah, a bit of the same. Netflix. Um, obviously, like to go out for dinner and stuff with the missus and yeah. um, take the dog out for walks and stuff and uh, also play a bit of Xbox. But on Netflix, but probably got hooked into Stranger Things, um, oh, yeah. which was pretty yeah. cool. So um, yeah. sad that's finished up. Yeah, cool. Enjoy all that because it's got about to end. <laughs> all right. Um, start, start watching Peppa Pig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was talking with. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, can you tell me the best game of footy you've ever played in? Is there a game that springs to mind? The 
best ever game you've played in. And I, I presume it, it could be something around a t 2016 grand final. But it was there something else that is a highlight for you as a game that stands out that you've played personally? in? Personally? Yeah. Um, personally, probably um, round one in 2016 when we played Freira, probably in terms of um, a consistent four-quarter game, I thought I, that was probably my best game I've played. And Great. Um, as a team perspective, probably obviously the grand final, but definitely the GWS preliminary final was the best game. That was brilliant. That was such a good game. I love that. Yeah, one of my favourites too. Um, what about you, Josh? Yeah, personally, um, probably one that was a few weeks ago against Melbourne, against my brother, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was good to beat him. But, yeah, as JJ said, the four-quarter effort, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a nice day. We got the win, so yeah. everything was very positive. And uh, as a team, yeah, apart from those two games that JJ mentioned, I think the West Coast final over there was a big step in, yeah. step in, the, in the right direction for us. And for sure. The Fremantle game really shaped us up for that final series. Yeah. We, we lost to Fremantle in the last round of the year and got together and worked out a few things and really went forward after that West Coast game. Yeah, fabulous. I love the announcement of you letting your sibling know, your younger brother know that he was about to be playing for Melbourne for his first game, which was fantastic. I saw that. Um, but it was also good he came out and kicked two last week. Was that correct? Clubs? Yeah, he did. Two yeah. goals last week. Yeah. So it's he's, good that he's going all right. Yeah. He's, he's done pretty well. Like From where he's come from in the last two months, he was yeah. playing TAC Cup footy. You know, eight weeks ago. So amazing wow. to play three games now and hopefully he's fourth this weekend. Good on him, mate. I think that's fantastic. I spoke, we had Easton Wood and Bailey Smith on the last Western Bulldogs show that we had and I was alluding to the fact of you about how you've really come through the ranks in the, in the last 12 months and I was alluding to the fact about your dad because I was a big fan of him uh, as a defender when he was playing at the Swans. It was, um, so good pedigree, I'd be suggesting, coming from the Dunkley family. Yeah. Um, and my last question to you both, um, what is the one food that you simply can't resist? Oh. Being that there's a bit of a cook yeah, going on here, I'm about interested this in this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm actually not a very fussy eater. I'll, okay. I'll eat most things, but um, growing up I had cabbage or mushrooms. So oh, okay. Two, two yeah, right. Okay. Cauliflower and white sauce. Oh. Does anyone else like that? Yeah. I love it. Love That's it. something that I love, love yeah. It. In the oven and just get that nice yeah a bit of cheese on top oh, yeah. yeah oh he's got he's got all the makings this boy I love it ladies and oh, gentlemen I, I, yes? I stuffed up that question I thought no it's all right resist. I thought foods that you don't like yeah no, it was actually that but I thought I'm, I won't inter interrupt you but yeah no, 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 yeah leave it at that all right there it is <laughs> ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for the boys there you go thanks guys that was very nice. <laughs> That was cute. All right. Um, I told you they're nice and polite, aren't they? Very good. All right. What we're going to do, um, boys, it, it is a footy panel show, so we will talk a little bit of football, but we'll get in, it, in and out of it nice and quick, and then we'll get back to having some fun. But we'll go into it now, uh, get it out of the way, and you can either give me your tips, a little bit of opinion if you want, or just a winning margin, who you think will do it. We'll go into it. It's round 21. It's uh, Friday, August the 9th is our first game, 7.50pm. It's at UNSW Canberra Oval. It's between GWS Giants and Hawthorne. Let's hear GWS. That'll do, mate. Let's go straight to the Hawks and then I'll do there all right so I told you'd be nice and quick didn't I boys um what do you think here though GWS Giants coming up against the Hawks um it is going to be in Canberra Hawthorne um they obviously they've got a couple of outs Ruffy they want to have a farewell game for him that's not going to be um surrounding this game though um a couple of little injuries that have also come about Birchall just came back after what two years nearly on the sidelines and he's done a you know a hammy um which is just really sad for him. Um, what are your thoughts here, though? Do you reckon GWS are on their, their roll and they're heading towards the pointy yeah, end of the season? I, I think GWS are going to be too strong, but Hawks, obviously, a massive game for them to win and stay in the hunt for finals. So yeah. it's going to be an interesting battle. It's always hard going down to Canberra on a, a, with a night game. We yeah. went down there a couple of years ago. It was freezing cold. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think GWS will be too good in this one. And I think it'll be bloody cold there this weekend as well. Um, what do you think, JJ? Yeah, I think uh, GWS also have some injury troubles, so yeah. um, they might get a few players back this week, so mm. I think they'll win. Yep, yeah, OK. All right, let's go to this game then. Uh, Saturday, August the 10th, 1.40pm. It's in Adelaide. It's Port Adelaide versus Sydney. Let's hear the Port song. That'll do, mate. Straight to the Sydney songs. That'll do there. All right. Um, what do you think here, boys? Port Adelaide versus Sydney. It is in Adelaide. Port Adelaide, they've been up, down, up, down, in, out, whatever's going on. Sydney, I don't know, probably a little bit off the mark. Um, 
lost controversially last weekend, possibly could have been a mark, put his arm down, some say uh, it could have been uh, the other way. Port Adelaide, in Adelaide though, you'd think they'd probably take the chocolates, but... Yeah, especially they were pretty impressive against Essendon last week mm. and um, they're one of those teams in the hunt for that eighth spot as well. So um, they desperately need a win and um, I think over there they'll get it done. Okay. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't win. I hope Sydney go over there and beat them. But, <laughs> so, so then it's better for us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as JJ said, Adelaide, Port Adelaide at Adelaide yeah. Oval, pretty hard to beat. Hard to, yeah. We I did understand. a couple of weeks ago though, so it was good. <laughs> Very nice, it was too. I enjoy that. Um, 145 this game at the MCG. Melbourne versus Collingwood. Let's hear the Melbourne song. It's a grand that'll do, mate. Straight to the pies. All right, that'll do there. Collingwood have been ravaged by injuries. Um, obviously, the latest one. Dane Beams is going to be out for the, the rest of the season, going in to have some more surgery. Um, but also Mason Cox with that eye injury. Um, their injury list is just mounting and mounting, getting to the stage where it just doesn't look like it's going to be their season. Uh, and Melbourne, well, they've just had a shocker, really, haven't they? Um, what do you think here, boys? Yeah, I think uh, this is a big game for Collingwood, to be mm. honest. It's um, obviously the injuries and all that that's gone on lately, but to to come up against Melbourne in what will probably be a big game crowd-wise and everyone will be watching it closely just for the see how Collingwood perform, really. For so sure. I think they'll be too good for Melbourne, but uh, hopefully for the brothers' sake, Melbourne get a win. Yeah, good. Excellent. I agree. All right. JJ? Yeah, I think Collingwood are too strong and, you know, Melbourne just haven't clicked yet. Mm. Um, so... Yeah, Collingwood should win easily, I reckon. Okay, all right. Let's go to this one then. 4.35 at the Gabba. Brisbane Lions versus the Gold Coast Suns. Tell me these guys haven't been a surprise packet. Um, wonderful result for them. Uh, Brisbane Lions, let's, let's hear their song. Thanks, mate. We'll go straight to the Gold Coast Suns. And that'll do there. Now, this could be either a uh, percentage-boosting win for the Brisbane Lions, which would cement their um, top four credentials. Coming up against the Gold Coast Suns, your thoughts? Yeah, we obviously we're fresh off um, the Brisbane game and um, they are an impressive side. Um, I think they'll win quite convincingly and uh, probably solidify their sp uh, top top two spot, actually. Yeah. Can I ask you, just before you um, give your uh, point there, Josh, the ground uh, at the Gabba, it just looks like it's, it's like a, a, a billiard table. It looks so smooth. What's it like to play on? Yeah, it's beautiful, actually. We, yeah. we walked out on there last Saturday before a Sunday game for a captain's run, and it was just like carpet. Yeah. I said to Jackson Trengo, because he loves his lawn, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. love your backyard to look like this, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> it, it, but it's just so impressive, you know? It, it looks is. really, it's really nice. It's good to play on, too. Like, the, you, my body's definitely pulled up a lot better okay. from, from that ground. Um, and, yeah, I suppose Brisbane coming off a, a win against Stars will beat Gold Coast quite easily. Yeah, uh, and they're full of run at the moment. They're from a half half back through the centre and they're using the corridor as well and then kicking it into their forward line. They're, they're a really strong team. A real surprise packet though. Um, let's go down to this game. It's at Alphabet Stadium, GMHBA and all the other letters in the alphabet. 7.25pm. <laughs> yeah. um, it's on Saturday evening. It's Geelong Cats versus North Melbourne. Let's hear the Cats. We are Thanks, Geelong, mate. Straight to the, the roost. That'll do there. Um, great to see that Reece Shaw signed on with the North Melbourne Football Club and he had his first win last week, obviously against one of his mentors in Alistair Clarkson. He's coming up against um, a Geelong side that have probably fallen off the mark the last five weeks. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, it's a strange one because before the bye, you'd um, tip Geelong to be the premiership favourites and mm. since the bye, they've um, sort of stagnated and, um, you know, I think North Melbourne could probably beat them the way, yeah. they, the way they're going. So, um, yeah, it's interesting, um, you know, because Geelong was such a strong team but mm. now it feels like um, anyone can really beat them. For sure. Yeah, 100% agree with JJ. North yeah. Melbourne have got every chance to win this one. Uh, but I still think Geelong will get over the line. OK. They're playing a really hard physical brand of football, North Melbourne, which is great. Um, but I think Geelong, they're going to come out. It's about time they've got to stamp their mark. Uh, let's jump this game and go to the next one. This is uh, now Sunday, August the 11th. This is at Marvel Stadium, 1.10pm. It's St Kilda versus Fremantle. Let's see Saints. Oh, Thanks, Saints mate. Straight to Freo. Um, <laughs> St Kilda versus Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. Freo are making the trip across the Nullarbor. What do you think here, boys? I'm, uh, I reckon Freo will get this one. Saints, okay. are, they've, they've had a good run the last few weeks, yep. but um, I think Freo will come across the, the Nullarbor and, and take the win. 
Um, I'll probably go with St Kilda here because I don't think Fremantle will travel that well. So okay. I'm just going with the travel factor here and I'll, I'll, I think St Kilda will win. Wow. Are we marking these down so we can reassess <laughs> yeah. and um, whoever someone, wins, wins? Yeah, yeah, yeah someone will keep record of it. <laughs> um, it's interesting, the, the Fremantle, they too are like Port Adelaide. They're just so hit and miss. You don't know what side you're going to get when they regardless of whether they're travelling or, or they're at home. Uh, so it'll be an interesting game. 3.20pm at Optus Stadium this game, West Coast Eagles versus Adelaide. Let's hear the West Coast song. Thanks, mate. Straight to the Crows. All right. Um, now, the West Coast Eagles forward line, <laughs> their centre line, their back line, they look as strong and as formidable as any team at the moment. They are going to be a real force to, be, to contend with when it comes finals time. Adelaide Crows have had a bit of infighting, you know, within the club externally. Um, everyone's calling for someone's head. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but you'd probably suggest that West Coast are going to you know, come out and do a number on them. They probably need to make a bit of a stand for themselves. It is on their home deck. Uh, Optus Oval, what do you think here? Well, I hope West Coast absolutely smash it. <laughs> yeah. um, Adelaide are in the eighth spot at the minute, yeah. and that's that's the position we want. So yeah. hopefully West Coast beat them by 200. That, that's, the best, that's the best answer I, I could get. And Josh, I yeah, reckon you just... West Coast definitely, I hope, <laughs> get the win. But they're, they're probably one of the best sides I reckon we've played this year. Just, yeah. as you said, the, the three lines, they're well represented in each area and got some very experienced players. And even the youth coming through, very impressive players. Absolutely. You know, Willie Rioli and Liam Ryan are very young. So it's, a, it's exo ex an exciting outfit and um, hopefully mm. we see them later on in the year. Whoa. All right, excellent. Uh, let's go to our second last game then. 3:20 p.m. as well. This is at the MCG. Uh, Arch nemesis: these two, Richmond versus Carlton. Let's hear the Tigers. That'll do, mate. Straight to the uh, the Blues. That'll do there. Um, this could be interesting because there are a couple of uh, clubs that we've alluded to that are in caretaker mode. Carlton's one of them. Um, they've come out. Their last couple of games have been quite impressive. And it's good because you're seeing the youth of Carlton starting to come through and come to the fore. Um, they're coming up against a rampant... Uh, Richmond outfit, though, who seem to be finding form just at the right time. Everyone's coming back into the side. What do you think? I think uh, I think Richmond will win, but yeah. I definitely think Carlton will take it up to them. They're, yeah. they're in they're actually in pretty good form lately and yeah. got some good players around Paddy Cripps in the midfield and, uh, as you said, some youth as well. So yeah. it's going to be an exciting game, I reckon, this one. I might yeah. actually watch on Sunday. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah, as you said, with the caretaker coach, um, I think players can play with a lot more freedom and mm. that's what you see Carlton doing and I think all their players are enjoying um, just playing footy together and um, they're playing some good footy And but I think Richmond will probably be too strong. I agree. All right. Good good points. Uh, let's go to this game then, ladies and gentlemen. This game is proudly brought to you by the big picture people, the experts in home cinema. Let's get the big picture on this game. What I want to do with you boys is I just want to go into it with a couple of points. I will lead off with uh, who you're going to be playing. It is 7.25 on Saturday evening at Marvel Stadium. You guys do play this very well, but the team you're coming up against does as well. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it is Essendon versus Western Bulldogs. Let's hear the Essendon song. That'll do. All right. Let's go straight to the Western Bulldogs one and you can join in if you like. Sounds Thank you very much. Thank you all. That's better. Now they're starting to come alive. That's what we want. All right. It's a little bit like Western Bulldogs last weekend, though. We need you for all quarters, not for the last ones. Um, but well done. Uh, what I wanted to do, boys, we're not going to talk about the teams because obviously that, well, that's going to be announced tomorrow. So we're just going to talk about a couple of things. Form, positives, uh, injury updates, the run home. Um, I'll go into form. You had one five on the trot. Going up to the gavel was always going to be a hard ask. Um, coming up against the hard running line, it's outfit. You squandered a few chances. You boys had plenty of the ball. And not a good start in the first quarter for only five points. I know that Bevo has come out and said exactly the same thing. What did you boys take from it in your own personal? Yeah, obviously, um, looking back at the game, we, we created a lot of opportunities. Um, obviously, we, we dominated, our midfield dominated, Dungs, Bonte, McRae um, dominated and gave our forwards a lot of opportunities. We just couldn't take the most of it. And um, especially in this day and age with the game, if you don't take your chances or yeah. you just slip up for a quarter, um, teams are too good now. So... 
Um, the positive thing is that we're, we're playing some good footy and when we do play some good footy, we can beat anyone. It's just um, trying to main sh make sure we play a consistent brand of footy for the four quarters and, um, you know, we're going to do that this week. Beautiful. There's a couple of things that you can also always take from um, a brand of football and it's going to be consistency. Uh, that is one of the, going to be one of the trademarks. Um, the positives, the up-and-coming brigade, I want to talk about Bailey Smith, 27 disposals. Josh Dunkley with 31. And, and super impressive was young Jack McRae with 45. It was like young Jack brought his own ball last weekend. It was fantastic. That's the young brigade, brigade that we were talking about even out the back, um, Jason, where the boys are starting to come through and find their own. And you must be wrapped to be playing with the Western Bulldogs. You've, obviously, you've you re-signed as well. Yeah, re-signed this year, three years. That? Congratulations. <laughs> well done, mate. That is seriously great. Um, but... I talk of Bailey Smith, I talk of Josh, Josh Dunkley, and then I talk about Jack McRae, and we're talking about 31, 27 and 45 disposals. That's fabulous. All you needed to do was convert, make sure that you can get score on the board, and the Western Bulldogs, as you say, can beat any team on their day. Yeah, that's right. It's exactly right. We, you know, As a midfield group, you know, myself, Bailey and Jacko and Bonte work really hard together. Libra as well. Mm. Mitch Wallace when he's out there on the track, but... We're, we're, we're finding that, you know, t young Timmy English has been really good for us in the ruck yeah. and is improving every week. So yeah. we're actually finding a really good tight-knit group that can work together and um, hopefully go forward in the future and perform really well together. So Absolutely. it's exciting times and I think, yeah, get behind us if you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, all these questions are without warning, but here comes another one that I'm just going to throw out there is how much are you enjoying your football at the moment? I can see in, in your face that you're loving playing at the Western Bulldogs and I know that's the feeling for you too, but let the fans here know. Give us a... I think, yeah, d definitely. Like, the, Obviously, my first year was a premiership year, so I came in on such a, <laughs> a high note and um, then you know we lose some personnel and injuries and things like that and it doesn't go your way. So we sort of fell away a little bit the last two years after that and then this year's definitely been a... A rejuvenated group, the coaching staff, everyone's up and about at the footy yeah. club. It's such a connected group, and I think we we catch up with each other off field more than we ever have before. That's so great. the That's relationships great. are really good, and yeah, as I mentioned, just it's exciting going forward. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, this is um, yeah, cut that. <laughs> um, this is this is my ninth season, so I, I've obviously different to Josh, but. Um, in terms of the mood and the morale around the place, it's very positive and yeah. um, all the boys that, you know, come into work, they want to get better, they want to improve yeah. and that's all we can do right now and, um, yeah, as Josh said, everyone's had good relationship with each other and um, I think we have exciting times ahead. I, I do too, I completely concur. It, it's been really interesting because we know there was a lot of uh, turmoil um, whether, how that was dealt with internally and externally. A lot of speculation when you get the media on board and then everybody's coming on and giving their two cents worth. You get injuries. Obviously, I was about to allude to the fact that you've got Dale, but you've also lost Liam Bicken. Uh, you've gone through Tom Boyd. You've got Lynn John. Uh, there's been some people that have had to deal with their own personal issues whilst trying to still play football. So there's a lot going on. And to come through to where you are now, I think it's a credit to the Western Bulldogs and to the playing unit. Yeah, obviously, being part of a football club, when you do have uh, those low times, the, the support around you is incredible. Yeah. And um, that's what um, makes it um, so sweeter when, when you do have those highs and sure. um, get through the end. And, um, you know, everyone at the football club is just so, so supportive of everyone and yeah. uh, we can help each other out. And um, at the end of the day, we're all after the same goal. Beautiful. I love it. Well said. Um, I do want to just touch on the, the Dale with his ACL. Um, obviously, he took the method that he did, and now the injury has come up. He has gone in and had that surgery, from what I understand, yes, yes. and now he's going to just obviously have to go through the process um, to get back. Um, number 38 on his jumper, I think that's nearly about the same age as what he is as well. Um, so he's, he's up against it, but he's a passionate individual, not only for football, but also for the Western Bulldogs. So it'd be great to see him go through what, what he has to do to get back on, on, the, on the field again. Um, Toby McLean, Matt Suckling, Josh Shackey, there's been some injuries. How are the boys, without going into too much detail, we'll just sort of move on and I'll throw, throw them all into that basket, but Toby McLean, Matt Suckling, Josh Shackey, how are all the boys going? Um, you obviously didn't watch the game last week. <laughs> no, well, I, I, I did, but I still know there was an injury and I know that 
Yeah, well, I did. <laughs> I'm but joking, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, no, they all um, came back in the team last week and um, they did all right. So um, yeah. I'm sure they will keep their spot and yeah. um, look forward to playing some good footy this weekend. Good, good. And No, I did say it, but I, yeah, anyway. Um, uh, let's go into the run home. Uh, you've got Essendon, GWS uh, up there at the Giant Stadium and Adelaide in Ballarat. But let's talk about this game then. It's on Saturday night. You're coming up against the Bombers. This is a big game. We know they all are when they get to this time of the, the season. But they tend to have a little more cream on top when you get to this time of the year. Um, now, this one will kick off at 7.25. Bombers are sitting seventh on the ladder um, with 11 wins and eight losses. You boys with nine wins and ten losses sitting in tenth spot. 4.3 percentage points is what separates you at the moment. Um, their form has been a little off, um, yours over recent weeks. They too have won five on the trot up until uh, last week, uh, until last weekend. Where do you think this game will be won and lost and what makes you believe you boys can come away with the four points? Uh, I, I think every game sort of won and lost in the midfield a little bit. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to be strong around the footy. Timmy English, is. we're going to ask him again this week to put his best foot forward for us as a team and give us first access. But then around the source and even away from it, I think you know their spread, Zach Merritt, Dyson Heppel, all their good players are very good on the spread. So we're going to have to help out our defenders in JJ and, and Woody and the likes and um, hopefully get the ball moving forward for, for Aaron Norton to take a few grabs. Yeah, good. OK. Yeah, um, exactly the same. I think that the way we played over the last month or so has is, is been very promising and um, as long as we can connect with our forwards and, you know, convert our goals, um, it'll come a long way and um, get in the four important points this yeah. weekend. It is going to be a big game coming up against the Bombers. They're as uh, eager to stay or, or get within the eight as, as what you are. So it'll be nice to see exactly how that one goes. Um, all I wanted to do from just saying that is you boys think you're going to win. Do you think how much you're going to... Want to put anything on the line and say, oh, we'll get across the line by X amount of... I reckon we'll win by about 30 points. Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Josh? Second that. Yeah, all right, good. All right, he said it first, OK? All right, that's nice. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was our us talking about the actual uh, round, round 21. That game was proudly brought to you by the big picture people, the experts in home cinema, six great locations, South Barang, Cheltenham, Fountain Gate, Hoppers Crossing, Water Gardens and the Gold Coast. Could you please put your hands together for these two champions? Thank you. Well done, boys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the insight. And, yeah, I did watch the game. I just had made notes that weren't really relative. Uh, good on you, Damo. Thanks very much, and thanks for pointing it out. All right, what we want to do now, we want to get two contestants up here. Um, actually, these contestants, all you have to do when you come up here is uh, really just stand here and, um, and flip over a paddle. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be introducing this segment. It is called Don't You Forget About Me. Don't, don't. Very different kind of show, this, isn't it, Josh? You've probably it is. Gone, it's good. I'm liking the it. Hell I'm am I doing really it? <laughs> good. Um, what's going to happen here? The two uh, contestants that we've actually got up here, they're going to be keeping score. This is where you guys are going to be playing. All right. There you go. <laughs> so this is where we start to test your medal. Um, so what's going to happen is Emily is going to keep score for you, Josh. Yep. And um, Brad is going to keep score for you, JJ. All right. So let's go, Brad. What's going to happen? Who would like to go first out of you two? Who would like to nominate themselves? I'll go first. Josh. Oh, Josh has said I will. Emily, you must love that kind of confidence. That means all right. Bring it on, she says. Um, so what's going to happen here, mate? You're going to be playing on behalf of, of each of them, right? Yep. And what's happening is these guys are playing to win you a cheesecake. All right. It's a Western Bulldogs cheesecake. So whoever wins this gets the cake. You guys get the cake. They don't get to eat it with you, though. You yeah. do. All right, so you're going to be keeping score first, Emily. Josh is going to go first. I'll explain how this works, mate. What I'm going to do, you've got 45 seconds on the clock. Yep. I'm going to read out every player's number at the club, and you've got to give me their Christian name and their surname. Okay. okay? Right. So with 45 seconds on the clock, Emily's going to get her arm going like a windmill, and uh, we're going to start with your first one now. Number 35. Caleb Daniel. Correct, number one. Matt Suckling. Correct. Matthew Suckling. Yes, uh, number 21. Uh, Thomas Libertore. Correct, number 25. Uh, ben Cavara. Correct, number four. Marcus Bondapelli. Correct, 27. Paddy Lipinski. Patrick Correct, Lipinski. No, that's all right. 20. Uh, Ed Richards. Correct, 39. Jason Johannesson. Correct, number 30. Uh, Fergus Green. Correct, number six. Bailey Smith. Correct, 26. Billy Gowers. Correct, eight. Uh, Jackson Trengo. Correct, 34. Bailey Williams. Correct, 10. Easton Wood. Correct, 16. 
Toby McLean. Correct, 38. Dale Morris. Correct, 31. Bailey Dale. Correct, 33. Uh, Aaron, no, not Aaron Norton. Yes, yes. correct, number 44. I'll give you this if you can Timothy get it. Timothy English. Tim, t- Timothy English, yes, excellent. So he finished up with a total score of 18. Oh, that's fantastic. Well done. Is there Thank any first players left for me? <laughs> that's not bad. I'll have to read out everyone from Essendon for you. Uh, no. <laughs> That was seriously fantastic. Finished up with a total score of 18. How did you do it, mate? Did you go around the locker room? Is it? What's your Just got to know your teammates. Yeah. Don't you forget about me. That's why we call it that. (laughs) Emily, that's a good score. You must be really looking forward to eating the cake, eh? (laughs) Let's get not too cocky, he says, JJ. (laughs) All right. uh, What we're going to do, you're going to be scoring now, Brad. Um, That was really good, Emily. You kept up nice and well. You got a nice workout there. Um, I'm going to start with your first one. You've got 45 seconds on the clock. Same rules apply. Here we go. Number 14. Uh, Riley West. Correct. Number two. Uh, Lewis Young. Correct. Number 19. Uh, Lucas Webb. Correct. Number 32. Uh, Will, William Hayes. Correct. Number three. Uh, Mitchell Wallace. Correct. Number 22. Uh, Sam Lloyd. Correct. Number 18. Fletcher Roberts. Correct. Number seven. Lockie Hunter. Correct. Lachlan 20, Hunter. 23. Um, Latham Vandermeer. Correct. Number 12. Zane Cordy. Correct. Number five. Josh Dunkley. Correct. Number 13. Josh Shackey. Correct, number 28. Callum Porter. Correct, number 9. Hayden Crozier. Correct, number 15. Uh, Taylor Jaray. Correct, number 36. Uh, Bradley Lynch. Correct, number 29. Tori Dixon. Correct, number 11. Jackson McRae. Correct, number... Oh. How'd he go? <laughs> Split it in half. Half oh, a cake, wow. half a cake, half a cake. Wow. That was sensational. <laughs> Let's just, can we put our hands together for these two guys? That was, that was fantastic. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. Um, because you got there, well, Josh got there first, I'm actually going to give you the Western Bulldogs cake, right? But I'm going to give you a best on ground. And it's got a $40 voucher in there for a cheesecake, so you can go and get your own cake, <laughs> all right? So that's yours. Well done. And you're about to receive this from the lovely Sandy. There it is. A Western Bulldogs cake, all right? So, Brad, you're... Brad, you're cool with that, aren't you? Because, I mean, you've got some uh, go-karting passes in there, you've got some comics lounge, um, and you've, as I said, you've got a cheesecake shop, all right? So, well done, brother. Good on you, mate. Give me that. I'll take that. Emily. Oops. That's all right. Don't worry, mate. That's okay. I'll fix that. Well done. Emily, well done. Good stuff. All right. Wow. Guys, that was seriously impressive. Um, generally, we get uh, some people on, and well, some players, and, and I'll say, oh, if you can get somewhere around 15 or 16, that'd be good. And we've had Jack Higgins on, and he got six. Um, <laughs> but for, for you guys to get 18, that was seriously cool. That was really great. Um, that edition of Don't You Forget About Me was proudly brought to you by the Cheesecake Shop, the nation's most loved cheesecake shop. Why? Because it's made with love. The Cheesecake Shop, with over 50 locations in Victoria alone, tonight's cake was made by the team down at Avondale Heights. So thanks to those guys for being part of it. We really loved it. All right, what we want to do now, this is where I want to get that little fella up. And have we got another kid in the room? So the way that this is actually going to work, um, you two are actually just going to be keeping score. And because Josh volunteered to go first last time, Jason has just kindly um, decided that he'd like to go first for this one. So... The way that this one's going to work, I'll introduce it. It's called What I Like About You. Uh Thanks, Andy. Well done. All right, so what's going to happen here, you you two will only keep score when I actually give you the correct answer. So I'll say correct, and you'll hear that noise. That's when you'll actually turn it over. Um, What's going to happen here, I'm going to ask a question, right? I'm going to ask it to Josh, and it's going to be about you, and Josh has to give the answer to what he thinks you would do in this particular circumstance. Right. All right. (laughs) This is how it's going to work. All right. It's going to be really interesting. What I want to do is, because these are all about finding out about their personalities, you know, it's all mm, very serious here. So I'll ask the question, and then you've got to give me what you think Jason would do. Here we go. Jason has pulled up at a set of traffic lights, and the people in the car next to him recognise him. What does he do next? A... Wave, B, ignore them, or C, pretend he hasn't seen them? C, pretend he hasn't seen them. (laughs) Jason, would that be correct? Uh, Yeah, probably. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's all I want. That's all right. It's okay. It's cool. So that's going to be one point, all right? Josh has got one point, which means you've got one point, Josh. So you flip that over. You're on one, all right? Yeah, flip it over and then just turn it around the other way. There you go. That's on one and then that's it. Now face the one that way. Beautiful. Well done. All right. Here comes your second one. Jason is out bike riding. He's on a bike-only bike path. Up ahead, he notices three people walking, three abreast on the path. What does he do next? Does he ring his bell to alert them, say, hey, look out, or get off his bike and walk around them? I reckon he'll get off his bike and walk around them. Uh, yeah, that's probably right. Um, I'm not a fan of bike riding, so I probably would, I would be, I wouldn't be on a bike. <laughs> okay, but for this experiment, he'd do C, which you got right, so that's uh, another point. All right, wonderful. Here's your last one. Jason is at a set of traffic lights, about to turn left, and the person in front of him cuts him off. <laughs> he then notices that when the arrow goes green, that they aren't even turning left. What does he do next? Does he just go, oh, whatever, no big deal, stare at them intently with contempt, or toot his horn? I think he toots his horn. <laughs> no, nah, I'm a pretty chilled out guy, and um, my partner actually gets mad at me because I don't get road rage, so <laughs> yeah, right. um, I don't even know that's a thing, but... Um, yeah, I, I would have, would have said just whatever. Yeah, I'm wow, pretty relaxed. Right. Wrong. No, no, no mm. point. But I like your honesty, and I think it's beautiful. I told you they're very sweet and innocent, aren't they? Beautiful boys. All right. So he just finished up with a score of two. So that's okay. Well done. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to ask three different questions. They're going to be about Josh. All right. So. Josh is at an intersection turning right and the person in front of him is on their phone texting and as a consequence, they miss the green arrow. What does he do next? Is he upset by this and he thinks, oh, well, or does he toot his horn or does he give them the death stare? Uh, he'll toot his horn. Yeah, I think I'd toot my horn. <laughs> yeah, right. I actually had this happen to me at Footscray, like coming to training one day. I was, yeah. yeah, I was frustrated. <laughs> Frustrated, that's being very polite for I will get out and just kill him. All right, uh, so that's one point, Ricky. Well done. All right. Um, Jason. Um, Josh. Josh. Whew, I'm getting confused now myself. Uh, Josh is doing the shopping and the person in front of him is in a queue. It is a 12 items or less queue. Um, with a massive trolley, they have a, a massive trolley load of groceries. What does he do next? Does he kindly point out that they are in, at the wrong register, say nothing and just patiently wait, or just move to another cash register? Um, I think Josh is not really a fan of um, controversy, so I think he would tr probably just move to a different cash register. I reckon I'd stay there <laughs> and line up. I'd yeah. probably just not say anything because I just, yeah. Too patient, deal with too it. patient. Wow. All right. Uh, Ricky, no point or mm. point? What are we... No. no point, no point. No, no point. All right. Here's his last one then. Josh is in a taxi cab with a driver that seems intent on stopping at every orange light when they could have clearly made it through. They also keep letting people merge in front. They are also driving at 20 kilometres under the speed limit. What does Josh do next? Does he think what a nice friendly person they are and say nothing? Or does he say, hey mate, what's going on? I've got to get to my destination as well. Or does he politely say, excuse me, can we please pick up the pace a little? Um, probably gets out, calls an Uber. No, probably C, um, ask politely to get a move on, I think. Yeah, definitely C. Go with that. I've had this one. I was, I was actually in New York last year in the off-season. Right. And I was going to catch a helicopter flight over New York, so oh, I like had yeah. a scenic one. Yeah. And it said on Google Maps, like, 40 minutes to get there. So I allowed an hour, like, being organised. And yeah. I thought an hour would be long enough. And this Uber driver literally took two hours to get there. So I, like, no. I was on the phone, like, trying to figure out, because the flight was going to oh. leave and... Um, I had to ring up, I had to go on another flight, but I was very angry that I did ask him to speed up, but he couldn't do anything about it. Wow. So. Real oh. life situation, this. Yeah, yeah. And that's why, these are just personality questions, just to find out a little bit about them. What did we finish up there then with a total score of one each? 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> do you know what's really good about that? I actually allowed for that because I wanted you both to win. And what you've both won is, there's a signed football from both the boys, and you've won one, and so have you. Because you both came out 2-2. Two, two. So give me that. Give me that. Well done, guys. That was beautiful. High fives all round. Thank you very much. That's just us finding out a little bit about the boys because you like to see they're footballers. We know that, but they're also humans and they go through circumstances like what we do. So thanks for being so candid, boys. I like that. All right. What we want to do now, we want to get two contestants up here that reckon they've been uh, listening to the show tonight. 
All right. Um, Sandy's going to um, organise you too. While she's doing that, I'll introduce a segment. It's called Knowing Me, Knowing You. Absolutely. Beautiful. All right. So what's going to happen here, boys? I've got these two contestants up here and they're going to now answer questions proposed on the fact that they've been listening to everything that's been happening as the show's been going on. And we're going to see how smart they actually are in relation to you two boys as well. So there was an introduction that I did at the start and then there were some questions that I posed to the boys. We want to know how much you two were paying attention. So we're going to start, Cameron, you're going to be playing for Josh. All right? Yep. Okay, and Brent, you're going to be playing for JJ. Pretty straightforward. You'll get a point for each one of these that you get right. I'm going to start with Josh first, Cameron, which means you've got to answer all of these questions relating to Josh. And Josh is going to give the answer, as in I'm not going to give it. Josh is going to go correct, all right? If he doesn't like it, he ain't getting no point. <laughs> Pretty simple. Um, so let's start with this. How old is, how old is Josh? Oh, I'm going to say uh, 22. Correct. Wow. All right. So there's one point. Okay. Uh, where did he grow up? Oh, small place. <laughs> Yarram. Correct. All right. Well done. Two points. Uh, who did he barrack for growing up? It was Sydney. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Three points. Um, I should let you know, each question you get right is worth five bucks. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> I like to just <laughs> throw that in there halfway through because then the pressure really rounds up. Um, so you've actually won $15 already. Um, who was his favourite footballer growing up? Oh, Pendles. Yeah. Correct. Well, there you go. All right, beautiful. Um, what is his frame of mind before a game of footy? Uh, he likes to chill out, relax. Yep, correct. Yeah, he likes it as well. All right, there we go. Um, what was he doing before footy came along? He was planning to go to university. And study? Business management? Yeah, correct. That's All right, good. well done. Good. Um, Bonus how many, point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many goals has he kicked in his career to date? Oh, yeah. Um, oh. 45? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's going to put the pressure on me to make sure I do. Uh, let me go, let me go, let me go. Yeah, you might have. There we go. Uh, you have said he kicked how many goals? 45. No, he mm. actually kicked 33. Oh, come bad on, luck. Sorry, mate. <laughs> You're not bad. You. That's not bad. You're his friend, though. He likes you now. All right. Um, what is his date of birth, day, month, and year? Oh, um, January 10th. January 10? Uh, 1993? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 20, Someone said three and I was yeah, like, yeah, I'll go yeah. with it. <laughs> Never listen to the audience. That's my tip for you. It was January the 9th, 1997. All right. Close. So no, 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 no cigar there. Uh, how many <laughs> AFL games has he played in his AFL career? Sorry, what was that? I knew I'd have to do that again. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, how many AFL games has he played in his career to date? 63. No, 62. Two. Bad luck, mate. Nice try. It's, it's five bucks. You ain't getting it. All right. Um, next next what's, week. You can get yeah. it, right? <laughs> what sort of pet does he have and what is it called? Oh, he has a uh, kadoodle. Uh, and it was called... Shh. Oh, no idea. No idea. Peter. Archie. <laughs> Peter. Mm. Uh, no, no points there either. Um... What is his nickname? Oh, the, the secret one or the... The yeah. secret one or the, the yeah. real one? Yeah, no, the secret one, oh, the one he told uh, us tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ken. Ken Doll. Ken Doll. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to be sharing your money with that lady there, I can tell you. <laughs> God. All right, what does he like to do <laughs> when he has just him time? Cook. Yeah, that's a Go good with call. That. All right, cook it is. Um, what was his best ever game of footy? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, who did they play? <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> nice, Cameron, uh, not bad. Against his brother in Melbourne? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, you get the points, well done. Um, what is the one food he can't resist? It's going to be interesting when uh, we come to you, isn't it? White, <laughs> uh, cauliflower with white sauce? Yes. Yeah, all right, well done. And here's your last one, what's his star sign? 
Capricorn? Correct. Well done. How'd you go? 11. Total score of 11. Wow. That's not bad, mate. 55 yeah, bucks. I'll take that. Yeah. Down to pokies. Yeah, good. <laughs> Actually, no, hold on to it and then buy some memorabilia at the end of the show. That'd be oh. fantastic. Then I get the money back. That'd be great. Uh, no, that's good. Well done. Good. Good stuff. That was good. That was very good. I love very those impressive. attentive little listeners. You've been paying attention. Now the pressure's on you, Brett. Have you been paying attention? Let's see how we go here. Um, these are going to be all about JJ. How old is JJ? I think it's 26. Correct. All right, there you go. Well done. Uh, where did he grow up? He was born in South Africa. Correct. And he grew up in East Fremantle. Yeah, that's correct. That's, Good, that's, mate. That's, I didn't even say that tonight, <laughs> but that's correct. That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Stalker. All right. <laughs> no, well done, mate. That was good. I like it a lot. Um, who, did he, who did he barrack for growing up? Uh, Frio. Yep. Frio, well done. Uh, who was his favourite footballer growing up? Pavlich or Bell? Yep, correct. Both Pavlich right. or Bell, very good. Um, what is his frame of mind before a game of footy? His favourite what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what is his what is his frame of mind oh, before frame. a game of footy? Yeah, he's pretty chilled. Yep, correct. Pretty chilled, very. Uh, how many goals has he kicked in his AFL career to date? More than dunks. Forty-two. <laughs> Did you 42? say forty-two? No, forty. Nice, nice attempt. Well done. Um, what is his date of birth, day, month, and year? This is sixth of November. Mm -hmm. Do the math. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do what I did. <laughs> Don't listen to the lady down the front. That's all I can tell you. Nineteen ninety-five. Uh, no. Not that young. Um, yeah. My daughter's due on the sixth, but I'm born on the eighth. There you go. 8th of November, 1992. Uh, here we go. How many games has he played in his AFL career? Uh, yeah, how many games has he played in his AFL career? He's played... Uh, one... 133? 122. Mm. Bad luck, mate. What sort of pet does he have and what is it called? It's a cavoodle. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure the name. No? No. No? Raph. 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 Yeah. Okay, can't give it to you. Half a point? Uh, no. No, that'd be, you'll have to give him $2.50. That'd, <laughs> that'd be embarrassing. Um, what is his nickname? JJ. Yeah, that, yeah, that is my nickname. Yeah. Did we actually go through that with you? Peaceful. Yeah. Peaceful baby. That's yeah. right, we did. So. But yeah, JJ is everyone. Yeah, that's yeah, what we wanted to. <laughs> All right, you can have it. You can have it. All right, you can have it. You can have it. Um, what does he like to do when he has just him time? Um, tick, 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 tick. I can't remember that one. No? No, all right, we'll pass Netflix it. Netflix or PlayStation, Xbox. That's it, all of those. Um, what uh, What was his best ever game of footy? Is Consistent four quarters. A four quarter game. <laughs> Eagles? No, it was Fremantle. Bad luck, mm. bad luck. Um, last two questions. What is the one food he can't resist? <laughs> <laughs> You can just have the five no, bucks. No, no, no. <laughs> he actually the, thought it was the, the other way. I, so. The food that I dislike. Well, actually, what is it now? Now we're at it. What is the one food you can't resist? Oh, my favourite cuisine is probably Japanese. So okay. that's my go-to, yeah. What would be your, your dish then? Uh, sashimi or like a soft-shell crab. Um, okay. Sushi. Nice, yeah. all right. Uh, what is the one food you can't resist? <laughs> <laughs> I was going, if you don't get this, all right, all right, you can have it. All right, well done. What's your star sign? Last Scorpio. one. Yeah. Scorpio. Correct. There it is. Uh, total score of eight. Uh, 40 bucks, mate. Well done. $40 there, $55 there. You guys are champions. Thanks very much. That was knowing me, knowing you. Well done, boys. Good one. We've got an attentive audience, isn't it? I like that. Well done, guys. Sandy will look after you with some cash.
We'll get you uh, to get your photos uh, when we get over the red carpet a little bit later on with the boys. Um, I wanted to allude to the fact that because those boys have won some money, that's proudly brought to you by the Big Picture people. They're a great sponsor of this show and we love them dearly. Uh, what they have done for us uh, this year is they're going to be giving away, as I mentioned at the, at the start of the show, a giant three metre screen with a surround sound home home surround sound package. Even that doesn't quite surmise it. But it's a giant three metre screen which is about the size of this banner. It's going to get delivered to someone's house. It'll be drawn on August the 28th. For your chance to win, get onto the Facebook page or go to the win section on the That's Good Footy website. Follow the links. T's and C's apply. It's only open to Victorian residents with thanks to the big picture people. Could you please put your hands together, guys? Thank you very much. Well done. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's been the show for tonight. We hope you've all had a really good time meeting both Josh Dunkley and Jason Johannesson from the Western Bulldogs. I yeah, please, please. They're beautiful boys. Um, you're a testament to your family. You're a testament to the Western Bulldogs. Um, it's wonderful. I told you they were polite, and they seriously are. They're gorgeous boys. It was wonderful having you both on the show tonight. You've been candid. You've gone through what you do at a set of traffic lights to what you do at a shopping centre. Um, it's been wonderful just getting all that stuff out of you. Um, and I hope you've all re really enjoyed it, because I told you that it's all about where the players meet the fans and the fans meet the players. Um, happy birthday, Andrew. Your birthday today. Congratulations. Today. Birthday today. Birthday oh, today. Birthday. Congratulations. Um, might have a stubby for you or something that I can... No, it'll be all right. Well, yeah. Uh, but happy birthday for today. Congratulations. Um, what I wanted to do is just say, one of the things that we always have as a bit of a struggle with That's Good For Footy panel shows is people knowing about them. So we need you people to tell your friends so as they can all come. Josh, you've got to go and tell all your friends. You've got to go to this show. They give you footballs and win, win frames and... Oh, win my everything. God, it's fantastic. Show and tell. It was amazing. Dad got up and made an absolute... Champion of himself, yeah. Well done, Brett. Um, so what we need you to do is talk to people and tell them that the Western Bulldog shows are, are, are great because you get to meet these guys in a different light and we've really had a good time with them tonight. So spread the word for us. Uh, thanks to Sandy, the Framing Queen. She's got her own business. Uh, there's her banner down there. She looks after all this stuff for us. So thanks to, thanks to her. Thanks to the big picture people for their... Um, all their co contributions tonight, but also for their $11,000 home th theatre surround sound package that we're giving away on August the 28th. Thanks to the Comics Lounge, uh, the best on ground that received those tonight. Also to Hamper World for the hampers. Thanks to the Cheesecake Shop. How's that going? Where, where's that? Oh, Emily. Emily. All right. Keep an eye on it. Uh, thanks to Burley Seacom for the footballs. Thanks to 3D Mini League for the actual figurines. And thanks to Ozcards because that was also in there. We've got another two shows coming up. Uh, we've got one in August the 28th, but we're just stepping it out slowly because we want to see who keeps making the finals. Right, Western Bulldogs? Because we could do another Western Bulldogs show. That'd be very nice. And Josh is wording me up now. He's going, I've got someone who might want to come along and do that show yeah, with me, a little, mate. Little, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how we go. Anyway, on August the 14th, appearing on the show, we've got Dylan Shew and Andrew McGrath from the Essendon Football Club. You don't have to like that, but Essendon fans do. Uh, that's down at the Hallam Hotel in Hallam. And on August the 28th, we're doing a Richmond show. Appearing on that show will be Shane Edwards and Sydney Stack. Live um, from the Tivoli, uh, Club Tivoli, 291 Dandenong Road in Windsor. Uh, August the 28th, we'll have a show, but as I said, we'll see how that pans out. All I wanted to do now is just thank all of you for coming tonight. We really appreciate your support. Um, there's so many faces that I see ke that keep coming to the shows on a regular basis, and we love you for it, all right? Thank you. Um, thanks to Sam, our sound guy. He does a wonderful job every week. <laughs> thanks to the lovely Sandy. We love Sandy. She does everything here. She looks after the players. She greets you all at the door. She sells you raffle tickets and she's always got a smile on her face and that's what we like about her. Don't we, Sandy? Yes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right. Um, that's, that's pretty well all I wanted to say. I now want to just hand it over and just go, thanks to Josh Dunkley. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you to Jason Joe Anderson. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're two wonderful blokes. I've really had a good time with you tonight. Let me ask you, what do you, th what do you think of tonight? How did it go for you? Who wants to go first? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. All right. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. It's oh, good, good. Uh, to be able to come up here. You know, you, there's not many footy shows that you can sort of let everyone know what you're like and what you've been through and sort of talk about your life. And I think like tonight, I felt like tonight's been like that and I've been able to relax a little bit and enjoy it. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Oh, getting a bit emotional. Touching. That was That was great. Thank you very much. JJ, how'd you go? No, nah, I've done this show before and yeah. I've loved it. And, yeah. um, you know, I've I'll always loved this show. So thanks for having me oh, again. Oh, I love it. 
They're coming back. I love them. Uh, it was wonderful having you both, both along here tonight. Just thanks to everybody. Thanks to the boys. My name's Damien. We hope you've had a good time tonight. This has been the That's Good for Footy panel show. Cheers and good night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.